Howdy everybody, Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist with the North Carolina Zoo. We have another one of those lovely overcast days this summer that's coming to it. Not quite summer yet, we'll call it late spring, how about that? Uh, I'm standing out here, uh, all right, this uh, lovely tree right over here behind me is one of the very, very large, fully mature white oak trees that's here in the backyard. Um, let's talk a little bit about oak trees to start with. People ask often, to, you know, okay, tree ID is kind of cool, it's kind of fun, it's a thing to know. You might pull it out at a party or something like that. But what's it really good for? So, I'll get to that. <clears throat> Oak trees, in general, are what we call the part of the climax vegetation here in central North Carolina. That means when a forest is fully mature, you'll have oak trees, hickory trees, and a whole variety of other hardwoods that are growing up here. Now, oak trees actually serve quite a wonderful purpose, a lot of purposes, to be honest. And a, a great big one like this one uh, has some interesting values. Uh, Texas A&M University, the forestry department there, <clears throat> has actually developed a way that you can put a monetary value on a tree based on its, its diameter and its height and how big the leaves spread and everything. And this incorporates uh, things like the stormwater that it intercepts, the carbon that it sequesters, the air that it helps clean, and things of that sort. So a fully mature white oak tree like this one behind me, and I'll explain the difference between white oaks and red oaks in just a moment. <clears throat> a fully mature tree like this probably has a value to my house of somewhere in the ballpark of between one to three hundred dollars every year. And one of those values is shade because it means my air conditioning system doesn't have to work quite as hard. So that's kind of a plus too. But in a natural sense, oak trees are kind of uh, one of the primary food producers, at least part of the year, for a lot of different animals. There's a uh, squirrel nest up in the top of this particular oak tree, and I have lots of gray squirrels that hang out in my yard. The acorns that fall, um, and uh, <laughs> there are a lot of them. Uh, oak trees, especially white oaks like this one, by the way, I'll get back to that acorn point in a second. But uh, these guys are kind of, um, best way to call it would be the bad guys for a lot of us. In the springtime, when they bloom, usually late February to March, uh, they have these, they're called catkins, and they produce a lot of that yellow haze pollen that makes most of us get kind of a runny nose or a sniff or a cough every now and again. That's oak trees. Uh, they do that. And then in the fall of the year, white oaks produce these very, very large acorns. They can be as big as the tip of my thumb, and in some cases even bigger. The white oak acorns, when they start to fall in the uh, uh, autumn, They'll land on cars, they'll land on barns and aluminum roofs, and they can leave a dent uh, in things. I had a pickup truck years ago with an aluminum camper shell on it that was covered in little dings and divots from the white oak acorns that fell out from the tree where I had to park. So that's part of that. If we start way up in the top, this lovely tree that's growing here in my backyard is a fully mature white oak tree. It's home for squirrels, it's home for birds. It actually has a lot of value being right here. This one is in the ballpark of about 60 to 70 feet high. And as impressive as they can be, once they get to be 60 to 70 feet tall, fully mature, this is how a white oak tree gets started. This one right here, this itty bitty little guy, this is a white oak that's probably sprouted from an acorn that fell off the tree about uh, 10 months ago last fall. The acorns of white oak trees do root and sprout relatively fast. More on that in just a second. Oak trees in general, now, oh, pardon me, let me back up a step. The acorns are really good food for lots of animals. They are nuts. Uh, the white oak acorns are very large. And one of the great things about white oaks is that they actually bloom and produce acorns every year. That's not true for all oak trees, and I'll get into that in just a moment. But the white oaks uh, are really kind of cool. They, uh, uh, the acorns themselves, if you open them up, they're large and uh, the uh, uh, nut meat in there is kind of yellow. And that yellow makes them really bitter. 
Trust me, I've tried them. Uh, if you take a red oak, the other kind of oak tree, um, a lot of times their acorns are almost orange on the inside. And that uh, the, the element that gives them that color, the yellow or the orange, is tannin or tannic acid. Now, many Native Americans and other cultures have eaten acorns over the years. But you often have to soak them in water or boil them in order to get the tannin out. And cultures have learned that tannin is actually kind of a good antiseptic, so that if you save the water that you've been soaking your acorns in, you can use it if you have a burn or a cut or something like that, and it'll actually work as an antiseptic and take care of things on the surface of your skin. So that's kind of cool. Okay. I've mentioned two different types of oak trees, but let's go back and talk about those for a second. In general, there's probably somewhere about, oh, maybe four to five dozen oak trees, different types, that can be found in North America. They all fall into one of three really, really, really broad categories. The first one, and I don't have any of these around here, the first one, are uh, live oaks, and live oaks are evergreens. We have a lot of these down along the coast, and sometimes they're very slow growers. They can be very, very old for a tree that's nowhere near as large as this one over my shoulder. So that's one category. The other category are the white oaks. Excuse me, one of the other two categories are the white oaks. And white oaks, uh, like the one behind me, as I said, white oaks, and this is what the leaf looks like, the oak leaf, I'll show you these closer up in a second. The white oak leaves are actually really, really cool. Uh, not the leaves, the trees. As I said, they bloom every year and they produce acorns every year. The acorns tend to sprout very quickly. So the squirrels and the deer and the raccoons and the possums have a very, very short period where they can actually eat these. So it's important food in the fall when a lot of the plants are sort of dying off from the summer, but the winter plants haven't come around yet. So white oaks, Again, they have the large acorns. I have no acorns right now, largely because this is in the late spring, early summer, and most of those acorns have either been hidden, eaten, or they've started to grow, like that itty bitty one I'll show you. So that's one of the uh, things. Now, white oaks, one of the ways, I'm gonna get this real close to the camera, that you can tell a white oak from a black oak. If you look at the tips of the leaves, these are called lobes. If you look at the tips of the leaves, the vein in the leaf, I'm trying to get this where you can see it, the vein in the leaf doesn't exactly go all the way to the tip. And so this tip of the lobe is rounded. The other category, red oaks, I'm gonna back up just a second. <clears throat> red oaks have an uh, interesting characteristic too. They don't bloom and they don't acorn every year. Usually it's every other year. They have smaller acorns, they're much more bitter, uh, they have much more tannin in them, and so they're not as popular as food for a lot of animals. They just taste lousy. Again, experience speaking, we tried them. But red oaks uh, have another thing that's uh, kind of interesting with those. Because they have those smaller acorns, they produce fewer of them, and because they taste worse, those acorns have a better chance of surviving. White oaks produce lots of acorns, a lot of them get eaten, and purely by numbers, they hope that some of them are going to grab hold and take root. Black oaks, they have that survival, excuse me, red oaks, they have that survival mechanism, which uh, actually helps them uh, to survive by being lousy tasting. So this is a red oak, uh, and this is a generic. There actually is a red, there's a scarlet, there's a black oak, and various other things. When you look at the uh, leaves for these guys, again, trying to get this really close, if you look at the vein in the leaf, that's what this is called, the vein in the leaf, the veins go all the way to the tip, and red oaks typically have a little, it almost looks like a point or a very, very small little hair on the tip of the leaf. So you have, on the one hand, white oaks that have very, very rounded leaf lobes, tips, and you have red oaks which have pointy with a little bit of hair. You have the three big groups, live oaks, red oaks, white oaks, white oaks produce big acorns, they flower and they produce acorns every year. Valuable food for lots of the wildlife found here in the Piedmont, North Carolina. The one in my backyard here is a white oak and we have a lot of those. They take root quite easily and they're actually quite beneficial. So, 
Oak trees, you know what they are, you know where they are, you know why they're important for wildlife and various other things. So hopefully that's just one of those cool things you learn as a naturalist. Again, it's a thing about being curious. I'm Mr. Bob, I want to mention to you as well, please visit the North Carolina Zoo's website at www.nczoo.org. We are doing virtual summer camps and uh, you can get yourself your tall people, your small people, anybody you like registered and participate in our virtual camps this summer, that would be wonderful. We would love to have you. We would love to come to your house. Well, virtually anyway, through uh, this particular medium. That's one of the things that's happening. Also, if you go to our website again, it's www.nczoo.org. We are now open to the public with lots of conditions. So you can visit the zoo. You do need to purchase your tickets in advance. There are appointments for coming into the park. We have to limit the number of people who are in the zoo at any given time. So please take advantage of some of those. Once again, I'm Mr. Bob with the North Carolina Zoo. I want to thank you for letting me join you a little while today and talk a little bit about oak trees, leaves, and acorns. Thanks. Take care of yourselves and be safe, all right? Bye now.